With his life in a state of chaos, he retreated to the solace of his study and returned to the subject of his first experience of chaos and upheaval, the war. When he emerged, he had written a caustic memoir entitled Goodbye to All That. An unsentimental look back at the events of World War I, Graves dashed off the first draft in record time. He told it, as I might tell you a story now of my life, it was ad-libbed. And in a way, that is the great strength of Goodbye to All That. It has this incredible force of truth, the ring of truth, because it's a voice telling it how it seemed to be. Goodbye to All That was a disturbing masterpiece of storytelling. It was an instant hit upon its publication in 1929 and established Graves as an up-and-coming writer. Like his earlier war poetry, the book pulled no punches when it touched on such taboo subjects as suicide in the trenches. Going towards company headquarters to wake the officers, I saw a man lying on his face in a machine gun shelter. I stopped and said, stand to there. I flashed my torch on him and saw that one of his feet was bare. I shook the sleeper by the arm and noticed suddenly the hole in the back of his head. He had taken off the boot and sock to pull the trigger of his rifle with one toe. The muzzle was in his mouth. Goodbye to all that was Graves' bitter farewell to England. He held nothing back, alienating his friends and family and making a clean break with his past. It was clear to Graves that things had to change, and they would. With profits from the success of Goodbye to All That and Laura able to walk again, the two packed up and sailed off to a new life on the Spanish island of Mallorca.